AI is everywhere and no matter how we end up using it, city and county managers will likely need a good understanding of how it works and the impact that it can have. And joining me to discuss AI here on ICMA TV is Jack Daly, Sabra Schneider and Peter Wallace. Three really smart people here, so I'm looking forward to a great discussion. But when it comes to AI, Sabra, how has that appeared in local government in your experience? Absolutely. In the city of Bellevue, Washington, we've been actively using AI for around 10 years, starting with when we adopted our first smart city plan around eight years ago. Um, and that included things like public safety and trying to uh, keep pedestrians and cyclists safer in the right of way. More recently, we've adopted generative AI, um, starting with staff trainings around two years ago and evolving to pilots and co-pilot and all kinds of deployments across the city. Wow. Okay, so how about you, Peter? How has AI appeared in your community? So in the city of Virginia Beach, um, being a military hub, large military in the, in, in the U.S., we have a military presence, so we all prepare for what's next. And it started obviously with COVID. What we were having was, how do we relocate people and get transformation done quickly, right? So we have that mindset, that culture to do what's next. So for us, it's about three years that we knock on the door. And part of our legacy application, modernization, is to really take a look at the features, functionality that's embedded already into the journey of AI. So I know you, Jack, work for a utility. Yeah. For AI and using that in a utility, I can imagine it can be a very useful tool to analyze data. Yeah, it can be useful for that. Honestly, where we're seeing the biggest impact of AI is just the amount of service demands that we're receiving. So you know, our system peak right now is about 200 megawatts, and we have that much capacity in the development pipeline so our focus now is to make sure we uh, appropriately allocate costs to those large loads and don't have them impact our residential and mom and pop business customer A lot of us really, you know, in the general public don't think about the energy that is used, but you're seeing the demand already and trying to build towards the future of what may be required. Absolutely. And I think thinking about the future, it's so uncertain. I mean, uh, there's... Nobody knows what's going to happen in the AI space. So we're trying to make sure we're really protected that if there's some consolidation or big breakthrough where they use a lot less power all of a sudden that we're not left holding the bag uh, for any stranded costs. So we work really hard to make sure that they pay their way from the outset. And so Sabra, when you're talking about maybe the limitations, what kind of comes up for you as far as how do we mitigate that? Sure. Um, a couple things we think about when we think about responsible AI. Um, one of them is that, that that traceability. Where did the information come from? Can you trace it back to the source? Um, another is making sure that humans are always involved, right? Uh, making sure they're reviewing things or double checking. Um, and then lastly, we do think about the environmental impacts and think about working with our partners on how do we mitigate some of the environmental impacts and how can we do that smarter, differently. Um, and we're fortunate to sit in the shadow of tech giants that are working on those problems. People think they're going to lose their job from AI. And especially it doesn't get better when you see the Microsoft laying off 9,000 people and things like that. However, the human, like Sabre mentioned, is part of the solution in the middle. You also have to have a governance policies around those so that everybody don't start using AI like a drunken soldier. You know, you really have to have that where you have the governance and the roadmap because people are using it at home, especially now with hybrid, people are using it already at home. So the expectation is to have the same thing on the job. So to have the strategic roadmap and policy to govern that is really key. You really hit on something interesting and Mission Square Institute had some information about using AI and part of it was a lot of people really are bringing it into the workforce because they personally used it at home. And so I don't know if that's something that you've seen, Jack, where someone is using it and they want to utilize it at work, but there are some limitations that local government does need to put in place. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it, it is so easy to use and it's, you know, there's no cost, there's no barrier to entry and on a personal level. So people get used to using it. Um, 
And it is a really valuable tool that can make you a lot more efficient and productive, but that human element and making sure, uh, also, you know, not putting in any uh, proprietary, proprietary or confidential information. I don't think people, people need to understand that the reason it's free is because they're using all the information you're putting in and trying to come up with ways to monetize that. So uh, it's important to keep that in people's mind. Are you really, uh, that is so important because education is gonna need to be part of the AI implementation, right? Because you need to educate your colleagues when you're bringing this in, like here's how we properly use it to protect identities, to protect other things that are security. So Sabra, what is the response that you've received from colleagues you know, who have been utilizing it um, in, in their work? So far, I think there's been a, equal parts excitement and caution in the city of Bellevue. Um, a lot of people are uh, pushing us to move forward quicker, um, and a lot of people are very worried about the tech. Uh, so a couple things we've done, we've partnered with the community to talk about their concerns and how we're using it and make sure we're incorporating the community feedback into our policies. I'm also fortunate to serve on the Gov AI Coalition Board, and the Gov AI Coalition is a by government, for government um, group of CIOs originally that came together out of San Jose to build things like draft policies that other governments can take and make their own. So it's a great place to start for cities who maybe are just getting their feet wet. So how important is it for people to also be on board when you want to utilize AI in your business, because that is the, that's sort of the push and pull is the human aspect of it. People wanting to use it, being apprehensive, not understanding how to use it properly. It's the essential part of it, right? And that's where in the city of Virginia Beach, we rolled out a Microsoft Copilot business case, where we give a license to every department, like all 50 departments across the board about operational efficiency. And the real question is, how do you automate some of the busy work? Right, and that kind of angst of fear of I'll lose my job. No, it's, it's really automating some of the busy work that you do so that you could actually be better to support with strategic effort. Technology has been changing government forever. And so we used to have um, meter readers go and manually read a meter. We do not, now our meters communicate to us. And so those meter reader jobs have evolved into pretty tech savvy analyst jobs. And so I think you know, there is a lot of fear and uncertainty, but I think the work that we do will become more elevated and technical. And, that, and that's a, an exciting opportunity and challenge, I think. Oh, and that's good. I'm glad you kind of are moving us towards the future. What do you see for AI being utilized, and I guess um, in a hopeful way? Sure. Um, we, in addition to kind of the productivity gains that you're talking about with potentially every person, We've also looked at what are our pain points now as a city and could AI help us with any of those pain points. And one of the areas we want to get faster, different, better at is permitting. And so we've partnered with a um, local company um, called GovStream AI uh, that is looking at trying to accelerate permitting and we've seen some great early results. That is very positive and hopeful. How about you? Any any outlook for the future in AI where you're using it? 911, 311 are very critical approaches to jobs. When the phone rings, somebody has to answer. And we had about 27 vacancies that we could not fulfill. Happy to report today that we're looking at 60% of AI answering or transferring the calls, the 911 calls to real operators. So take that workload off and those 27 vacancies were actually shift to fire department for first responders. Yeah, it allows you to be more strategic. Absolutely. While still fulfilling the needs of the community, which is what you all are, you know, that's your passion and what you do. Thank you so much. And I think that if, if anything, we all just need to keep having conversations about how do we use AI? And that's what this was today. So I wanna thank all three of you for joining us to have this important discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.